started with a prayer. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much for today, Lord. I thank you that your son came down and, Lord, death could not hold him. Lord, I pray that you can be with us each as we, we listen to this message. Lord, be with me as I give the message and just let us feel your presence and your Holy Spirit being active right now in this moment. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, Happy Easter. Today is the day that our Savior rose from the dead. Hallelujah. So, as Christians, today is a very, very happy day for us. Jesus has defeated death, and he has proved that he is the Holy Son of God. So, without further ado, our Bible reading today comes from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. So it's John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. So it is quite a long Bible reading, but just try and, you know, listen. If you want to follow in your Bibles, that's really cool. Okay. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise back from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in our Bible reading, this Bible reading, it comes from the book of John. And John is known as the disciple that Jesus loved. So you can see how John mentions, you know, the, the disciple that Jesus loved. And on this on this day, so it would be the Sunday, the last the first day of the week, which was considered the Sunday, it still is now. So Sunday is the first day of the week. They went Mary Mary Magdalene went to go, went to the tomb to go and, you know, she was missing Jesus and she was sad, so she went to the tomb. And she saw that it was it was it was empty. So she ran to the disciples, and so John the disciple and Simon Peter, who is also known as Peter, went and ran to the, the tomb, and they saw that Jesus was also not there. And then they went back to the other disciples, and Mary stayed behind and she she was crying. And she thought she saw a gardener and she was speaking to him. She's like, Please, where did you take him? Because there's there, there's a theory that they might have taken Jesus' body because they were worried that he might, that the Pharisees would have been worried that Jesus would have risen. You know, they didn't want more controversy. They didn't want, you know, their, their power to go out or to be dimmed. So she thought that they might have taken him away. But then when she see when the teacher says, Mary, oh, excuse me, when the gardener, the man standing there by Mary, said Mary, then she automatically knew that it was Jesus. And she's just so happy and she goes and tells the disciples that she saw Jesus. So what does Easter mean for us? So this is now the day that Jesus has risen. He has defeated death. He he has proved that he is the Holy Son of God. So what excuse me. So what does Easter mean to you? Well, what does it mean to us? 
It means that Jesus has fulfilled all the prophecies that were spoken about in the Old Testament. It proves that Jesus really is the Holy Son of God. Because when he died on the cross, he died. You know, you can go into, you can ask um, experts and they will tell you, no, that Jesus would have died on the cross. It also proves that we can trust everything that Jesus has told us in the Bible. And that we are no longer condemned by our sins, but we are now forgiven through the death of Jesus Christ. And it also guarantees eternal life for all believers. So what does Easter mean to you? You know, we can think of it as, as a long weekend when we don't have to go to school or to work and we get Easter eggs and it's just a nice time. But Easter is so much more meaningful than that. It is, it is a truly remarkable day where we can truly, we, as Christians, we are truly set apart from the rest of the world because now we believe in the Holy Son of God, that he died and that he rose three days later. And this happens so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could be reconciled with God. So it's not about the Easter eggs. It's not about the, the long weekend and the, a little bit extra time where we get to sleep in. It's more than that. And I pray that this Easter time you reflect on that, that you remember the reason for the season. And just reflect on what Jesus has done in your life. And, and maybe this is also a time when you come back to Jesus. Because I know in the year when things get busy, I've, I've spoken to quite a lot of you where, you know, school's happening and you can't make it to church anymore and also the coronavirus. So maybe this is a time when you, you come back to Jesus, when you invite Jesus back into your heart and just remember what he has done for you. So let us pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much for the special day, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your son's sacrifice, that we could be reconciled with you and that our sins could be forgiven, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for loving us, for, for rescuing us from our sins, Lord. Lord, please help us to remember what this day really is about. Lord, about your son's sacrifice, for his great love for us, even though he didn't know us at that time, Lord. Lord, I pray that you be with each and every single one of us, Lord. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and Help us to love people how you love us, Lord. Lord, be with us this week, Lord. Help us to be the shining light in this dark world. Protect us, guard us, and guide us. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day, and hopefully see you at church next week. See you guys. Bye.